<laughs> ah, good morning, Mr. Novak. Hello, good morning, everybody. Hello, Tomas. Good morning. Hello, Mario. <clears throat> I hope you hear me well. I have seen your image video. It looks like a great new lab, uh, a valuable extension to the European test lab infrastructure. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And I saw you also test surfboards. I didn't uh, skateboards. I didn't know that. Uh, I'm a big fan of Back to the Future. You know this movie from the past where they all skateboard and they they introduce that. Maybe they could have benefited from your expertise too. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, can we ask you for your presentation right now? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I will. Yeah. So let me just start that and then share my screen. Uh, I understand your, your technicians will organize the rest. So here it goes. There should be a starting slide. Yeah, can you see that? We oui. Yes. So you see Paris in the future by Vincent Calvo. Yeah, we can see your screen. So everybody, Good. everything should be working. I guess. Very nice. I chose this, uh, this slide because I'm a big fan of these futuristic pictures. I think it's important for us to imagine how a future could look like. And uh, I'm also a big fan of Paris. It's uh, an interesting city, especially under the current circumstances where the mayor uh, is changing so many things and wants to make Paris a 15-minute city where uh, local transport with bikes, with pedestrians and so on gets more and more importance. And when I was asked by you, Mario, how to call this presentation, I thought, well, let's be bold. So heat pumps for everything and everybody. Is that even possible? How many of the buildings that we see in this picture will be heated and cooled, of course, also by heat pumps, but also how many other products will use this technology, which is such a wonder child of energy, uh, energy, energy cycle closure and energy systems integration. Let's see if I can see some, wait, something is not working in switching the slides. So I start that again. Hmm. Hold on. It seems I'm I'm not able to move my slides forward. We can see the PowerPoint, so maybe... Yeah, yeah but, but something, <laughs> something... Ah, okay, no, it's this one. It's a, it's a wrong... Ah, okay. A wrong setting, so I want to stay... Mario, so now we go. No problem. So... You should see the full screen picture now. No, not yet. No, you not just yeah, yeah. I will stop sharing ah. this more. <laughs> Too quick, maybe. You can see full screen just your face right now. <laughs> I can also speak without the slides, but let's, yeah. let's use the slide if possible. So I think now we are there. So thank you very much for your patience. Um, and after one more than one year, we should be more professional. But I'm, I'm, I apologize. I didn't <laughs> check this possible mistake. So. Heat pumps for everything and everybody. Uh, the European Heat Pump Association is a sector organization. So we have members now 145 from all parts of the value chain. And that gives us sometimes a bit a broader perspective. Instead of only looking at the industry, we can also look at system aspects and at aspects that affect um, the society. Normally, when I open such a meeting, it's a bit unnecessary today, so I apologize for that. But it's important to stress that not everybody realizes that heat pumps are used already pretty much everywhere. Jokingly, but only half, I tend to say that everybody is work working towards the fourth or fifth heat pump in their uh, personal environment. Most of us have a heat pump, 97%, I think, is market penetration in their fridges. That's the original product that uses heat pump technology, but then it's also used now in the most energy efficient solutions when it comes to other white goods, washing machines, dishwashers, uh, and even now electric cars for range extension. Uh, you will have the, the Skoda uh, ENIAC very shortly, and I, I'm, I'm, I've been told that it also has a heat pump. It's a product to test, and if you're not convinced of heat pumps, you will be after you have tested that one. 
EHPA itself, we are looking more at uh, the, the building site, residential buildings, commercial buildings, but also industrial processes and district heating. And I put this skyscraper up here, big buildings, because the question to me is, is a big building a district heating system or is that a building? And does it make a difference? And I would say no, because the most important aspect that we want to push forward is a very efficient way of using energy, an efficient way meaning that we close energy cycles and that we use waste energy that can otherwise not be used anymore as uh, efficiently as possible. And heat pumps are perfect heat pumps in combination with district heating, heat pumps in combination with thermal storage, because then you can bridge temperature level differences between supply and the need. Then you can bridge differences in location of uh, heat occurring, of energy occurring, and you can uh, bridge differences in time. So then you have pretty much a complete solution. What we also see now, that was only, only the thermal sector, but we also see that we have an additional benefit when it comes to high renewable electricity grids where the supply is fluctuating and where we don't have a con continuous supply of electricity from photovoltaic and wind. And here the storage system, heat pumps, heat pump systems as integral part of such a system can provide stabilization solutions, stabilization options, and also a higher uptime of the generators sets, the windmills and the photovoltaics. There is enough studies that show that this is true. Coming to areas where today uh, heating is done with polluting energy sources, then the switch to heat pumps also has a very beneficial aspect, a very beneficial impact on the air quality of the inhabitants. I have see, shown here a photo from Krakow, but I know that there are many other areas in Europe where coal and oil, but also to a lesser extent gas are still used. There, the health aspect, outdoor air quality that is inhabited from in, inhibited from heating should be taken into consideration and should also become part of the agenda when we talk about sustainable solutions for the future. And of course, if you connect this with the ventilation system, which is shown here on the right side, then you also have better indoor air quality. Another truth is that heat pumps provide employment. I would say that the employment impact of heat pumps is very continuous. We have counted 165 manufacturing sites. I know that the area of Brünn is really, um, you could say, a, a, a hub of heat pump knowledge. There is a lot of good engineers uh, also in your country. And we can see all over Europe that we need more than 83,000 full-time equivalents for the provision of services necessary for the manufacturing, installation and maintenance of the current heat pump sales volume that we have. And since the Commission, the European Commission is forecasting that we need to quadruple this amount, then this amount will probably more than quadruple. I'm very careful in saying we will create these jobs, but I'm, I, I think I can safely say that this industry will maintain these jobs because they come from areas that are not that, that future proof. And if you're an engineer in the heating sector, you can also be an engineer or an expert or a specialist in heat pumps. Looking at the markets, <clears throat> we can say that, <clears throat> that we don't have heat pumps for everybody yet, but we have 14.8 million uh, heat pumps installed in Europe in a total building stock of around 115, maybe 120 million buildings. That's roughly exceeding 10%. And in annual sales, we are now arriving at about 20%. 1.6 million heat pumps were sold in 2020. That's a growth of six, maybe 7% over 2019. And it also, it's a doubling of annual sales from 2015. So you see how fast this sector is developing and how important also quality is <clears throat> and how important the provision of services by bodies like SDU is becoming. Looking at the uh, distribution across countries, then we see here that three countries are responsible for providing 50% of the European market, France, Italy and Germany. And you see that then the next uh, seven all to are together responsible for nearly 90% of the market. So this is Spain, Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Poland and the Netherlands um, with a 
follow up by UK, Czech, uh, Switzerland, uh, Austria, Portugal, Czech Republic, Belgium, Lithuania, Estonia, Ireland, Slovakia and Hungary. And that's the countries that we're covering at the moment. So you also get that. This is a good news, actually, because it shows that there is huge growth potential because from an application feasibility perspective, heat pumps are feasible all across Europe. Right. So these 1.6 million units uh, that we are selling at the moment as an industry annually can easily be doubled, if not tripled. And that is also necessary, as I will show in a second. Heat pumps have a number of benefits. So it's good for society to have more heat pumps. It's good for society to use them if, the, if we take energy efficiency targets and the use of renewable energy really seriously. I will not bore you with the numbers. Um, my slides can be made available and you can look at them yourself. You should see, however, that in the bottom left corner of this slide, I have put down demand response potential 3.4 terawatt hours. That's at the moment a technical potential. It's important that the framework conditions of using heat pumps inside the electric grids as an active contributor are created so that there is a value given to flexibility because only then will this demand side flexibility potential become reality. And that's important if we want to green the electric grids. What do we see for the future? And then I'm coming to this idea that heat pumps for everything and everybody may really become a reality. Uh, the European Commission has recently proposed a new target for Europe and the member states have agreed we, sh we, are, we should now uh, aim for 55% CO2 emission reduction compared to 1990 uh, to be achieved by 2030. And that means that we have to increase the use of clean and efficient technologies in heating and heat pumps are one of the cornerstones of this. this New target will be executed via a group of, of, uh, of, of legislation. There is two communications, the EU strategy for system integration and the EU renovation wave communication. And then there is the fit for 55% package. And that's a revision of 15 initiatives, including the renewable energy directive, the energy efficiency directive, um, the energy taxation directives and others. And, and this is under discussion as we speak. There is also the uh, energy performance of buildings directive that will come later this fall. And we hope that this package will be announced on the 14th of, of July or around that date. Uh, that's the current timeline that has been announced by the European Commission. So what does that mean? Looking at these two communications, I think they are most important because they have been passed already a while ago and they are built on an impact assessment that we can say that if the this target is supposed to be achieved we need to quadruple the number of heat pumps that is installed in europe so remember we had 14 million maybe heating heat pumps is only 13.2 million and so we have to move to somewhere between 42 and uh, or 49 and 59 million heat pumps why because the commission says if we want to achieve the emission targets then we have to reduce emissions from heating that means um, an energy carrier switch that means going to electricity and if we do this efficiently it means moving from fossil heaters to electric compression heat pumps mainly there is a room for some thermally driven heat pumps there's also room for hybrid systems but the major um, job will have to be done by electric compression heat pumps and most of them will be air to water heat pumps so your new lab your extension comes at a perfect timing then uh, people say, but yeah, but these air source heat pumps, they're not efficient enough, so they're not good enough for renovation. Here comes the second communication to the rescue to us because the EU renovation wave communication says, let's first renovate the least performing buildings. And renovating the least performing buildings makes them eligible, makes them applicable for heat pumps uh, without further ado. So there is actually a huge opening in an area where in the past we would have said, well, you know, if you don't renovate the building first, at least for those buildings that require um, a feet and temperature of 60 to 80 degrees, then you shouldn't use a heat pump. I would still say that. So if you are looking at 55 degrees feet temperature, then you can use a heat pump. The good ones can provide this temperature easily. If you go above that, then let's look at this renovation wave communication and renovate them first. Now to the rescue comes also a recent report by the International Energy Agency. And I want to say that too, because it, it goes in the same direction. This report, Net Zero by 2050, was published last week. 
And looking at the building envelope, looking at heating and cooling, and looking at industry, it is super optimistic um, and super demanding, I would also say, because it's not only good that people say that we should have more heat pumps, it creates a burden on our all, whole industry because we have to make sure that we execute with quality in mind. <clears throat> so this report says, by 2050, we should have 1.8 billion, 1.8 billion heat pumps installed worldwide. This should include industrial heat pumps too. And for the industrial heat pumps, they measure this in megawatts and they say 500 megawatts per month need to be installed for industrial heat pumps alone um, per month over the next 30 years to achieve the emission reduction targets that are shown here. So great opportunity, great potential, but also a burden to do it right. If we put this together, I just did this hand-drawn picture of a possible development pathway. I know, I don't know, I didn't have my glass bowl with me, so I don't know if this is going to happen, but I'm sure it has to happen along these lines. And that means you see the two uh, orange circles here. This is where we are in 2020. We need to accelerate. It's, a, it's an era of exponential growth. That's why I think it's, it's absolutely appropriate to speak about the decade of heat pumps. I'm also sure that industry can deliver. If you talk to manufacturing uh, manufacturers, they say we can deliver these type of, uh, of um, these amounts of heat pumps. That's possible. But is the market framework um, already prepared for that? And I looked at we looked at this graph. We looked at um, uh, we looked at this this graph comparing the burden that is put on electricity across Europe. Uh, the Arrow is just for, for explanation. So what this graph is showing us is that you need, for example, in Italy, but it's about the same in Czech Republic and in Slovenia and Slovakia, you need about uh, an efficiency of three, maybe even more, in order to, to break even when it comes to the operation cost of your heating device. So if you install a heat pump with an efficiency of three, then you will have the same heating cost as if you use a uh, fossil boiler, and in this case, it's the best available alternative, so it's a gas condensing boiler in the respective country. And that also shows that actually the requirements that a heat pump has to fulfill are, I would say, artificially distorted. It's still very cheap to use fossil energy, and it's still comparatively expensive to use an increasingly green electricity source as energy. And a colleague of mine always says, if you put the candies on the table, it's very difficult to convince the kids to eat the apples. And we think that the taxation levels have to change. It needs to become actually much cheaper to heat with a clean technology than to heat with a polluting technology. So that's one of the focus areas that we are looking at. One option that, that you can do to achieve that, and again, this is one option that is needed in order to make heat pumps available to, to each and every one of us, uh, is the CO2 price. You see here that quite a few countries have a CO2 price already. That's the first result of a study that, we're, that we have done recently, a comparison. You also see that the, elect the CO2 price is not very high in many countries. And so the impact that we see at the moment is not as good as it could be. You see, too, in this graph that countries with a high CO2 price, for example, Sweden, which has 120 euros per ton of CO2, or also Switzerland, which is now moving close to 100 Swiss francs, uh, also France, they, have, they see quite positive heat pump sales development. So in conclusion, I would say that uh, heat pumps for each and everybody uh, is possible. If we follow the forecast of the European Commission, then we will see a 15% increase in production every year for the next 10 years. If we follow the European, uh, the International Energy Agency, maybe this increase even has to be bigger on a world level. But we need end user demand for that. And in order to activate end user demand, since end users look at their own wallets, we have to create, we have to, we as association have to lobby governments to create an economic framework, a market framework that gives a bonus to green electricity and puts a burden on polluting energy sources. That can be done via a CO2 price signal. It can be done, it must be done by a review of the energy taxation. And in order to avoid 
that poor households are suffering from this situation, there should always be a support scheme in, put in place at the same time. And ideally, in this case, you can use the proceedings from the CO2 tax to support energy efficiency measures for social housing, for low income housing. And personally, I would also say for public buildings, because public buildings have an important role to play when it comes to showcasing what is possible. So the advertising aspect, the marketing aspect of having heat pumps in many buildings that are frequented often, schools, hospitals, town halls, sports centers, where they all fit very well, is, I think, um, very decisive for success of the change that we are facing. If all this happens, then we will have a very decarbonized future ahead of us. So what I would say as the challenge for us is what strategy, what structure, what action do we need to ensure that we can uphold the growth that I have just shown to you, which will lead to mass heat pump deployment across Europe. I will close with the last slide here that shows a very optimistic outlook. Uh, Two million maybe heat pumps sold in 2021, maybe not, because we don't. It's, it's difficult to assess under the current COVID situation, but I'm sure that we have to move very fast towards 3 million heat pumps in the uh, upcoming five years and then even higher until 2030 to make all this a reality and a success. And if we successfully do so, then we will have heat pump societies. Our graph is not as beautiful as the one that I showed in the beginning from the architect Vincent Calbo, but I am convinced that a heat pump city is a livable city and an attractive city for all of us and for generations to come. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and I wish you good luck and all success for the test lab. Thank you very much for a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, Thomas, are you still there or is it yeah. disconnect? We have a few uh, questions for you. Do you have a time? Absolutely. So the number one is, uh, what do you think is the crucial factor for further development of heat pumps? You mean from a technology perspective or from a social social science perspective? Uh, I think technology. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not the. Uh, well, this I, is not I my would, question. <laughs> I would I would say that uh, it's it's probably not even a technical uh, a technical challenge. The, my my personal perspective is we have moved so fast and so far over the last five to six years that now we have heat pumps for most application areas. Um, you can do a heat pump that provides 70 degrees with an efficiency of three, uh, and that is available, right? You have tested it in your labs. You see that these products exist and you can install them. The question is, who is building them? Are the installers knowledgeable enough? Do the governments trust the technology? So I would say, if you ask me this, Let's push the technology aside for a second and think of social innovation, policy driven innovation. We need policymakers that understand what the heat pump technology can do for them and then support this technology wholeheartedly. And then I would say there is a feedback loop happening because if demand is increasing, more people, more brain will come to this industry and we will automatically find improved solutions. But I would really say from a technology perspective, what we have today is really sufficient at least for five years to go. So we have some time to, to look at the technology development. But if we want to do this successfully, we need to improve the political framework. Okay, thank you very much for the answer. Another question on our chat is about hydrogen. Do you see hydrogen as a competition for heat pumps or as a future? Hmm. Well, that, that's the question. I, now, normally, this question is asked as number one. <laughs> <laughs> We have the number two. <laughs> yeah. um, let, let's, let's, uh, I represent the heat pumps, right? So I will comment on, the, on where I think is, uh, heat pumps can do a lot of things. And if I would show you two graphs, and one shows the annual heat pump sales, and the other one shows you the annual gas boiler sales. You know, you will see a nice curve on the heat pump sales number and you will see uh, nothing on the hydrogen boiler sales number. So I'm an economist and I'm thinking we need change that has to happen fast. And if you look at uh, technology transition curves, 
then you realize that it typically takes about 30 years from introduction to market success. And that means to me that we need first for this energy transition to look at those solutions that we have available at hand. And here you're not surprised that I will say this is heat pumps. And if we have solutions in the building sector where the heat pump cannot do the trick, then we need to look for other alternatives. And that could be e-fuels, that could be hydrogen. This I will not, I will not comment on. But I can tell you that we, sh that I, in my opinion, the potential for heat pumps is by far not used to its uh, to its limit. So let's focus on that one first before we start to develop something else that will deliver in ten years. Okay, thank you. We have a new question here on our chat. Which do you think that will be the refrigerant of the future? R290. When do you expect the modification of the F gas regulation? Oh, the second one is easier. Uh, the F gas regulation is is uh, is under review, anyways, as we speak. So we we are in Brussels discussing with the European Commission, with DG Klima in particular. Uh, we are discussing with other stakeholders. We are looking at what can be done in terms of a change of the allowed refrigerants. I'm happy to say that at the moment at least we have been able to to uh, push away the the idea of bans when it comes to refrigerants and heat pumps because we have convinced the commission and i am personally convinced based on facts that a heat pump is better than a fossil boiler and that is no matter what so the question of the refrigerant maybe we can park that a little bit because now we have to look at using heat pumps and making this use uh, possible as safe as possible yeah so we need to look at education of installers we maybe we need to look at uh, improving the manufacturing capacities of, so that a sealed system is a sealed system maybe we need to look at monitoring better how much refrigerants we are really using and your expertise can really contribute to that and then there is going to be a solution that also applies that will filter refrigerants out i mean we all know that the F gas regulation as it stands foresees a very strict reduction of allowed um, of, of available quota. So automatically a refrigerant of like R Porten A, for example, will not have a great future, maybe in pockets of a niches where it's where there is no alternative. But this argument that there is no alternative is actually going down very quickly. Propane will be used. As I said, these efficient heat pumps that can be used in renovation, they are often propane. We have other refrigerants that are low and very low in GWP. They will also be used. So I don't dare to say who, what's the refrigerant of the future. I think we have benefited in the past from having a few solutions available. But we all have to admit that the number of solutions under the F-gas regulation and other regulations that will affect the use of refrigerants is getting smaller and smaller. So at the moment, I think it's important to stress that if banning a certain refrigerant limits the, the sales potential of a heat pump, then it shouldn't happen. Because if you don't sell the heat pump and you take a fossil solution instead, you're not doing the environment a favor. So we should focus on the total equivalent warming potential and not on the refrigerant only. It's a system decision, not a component decision. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, another question is maybe a little bit similar. In your opinion, in which area there will be the biggest leap forward in application of the heat pumps technology? Households, industry or municipalities? Hmm. I think the fastest growth has to happen at the moment in industrial applications because that is the sector lagging behind the most. But it's a completely different value chain. I think the, the, the quickest change we will see in, in residential applications, because there, I really repeat what I said before, this is already a significant market. And that means automatically that the manpower, the women power, the resources um, that are fueled into this sector is increasing. And that will accelerate, you know? So it's like an afterburner that is now happening. Industrial applications, they are very interesting and they need to develop fast, but they are on a much smaller level. Okay. But all in all, uh, you know, what I thinking of what is maybe interesting is the spillover from the car industry. If you look at the electric cars that have these, these heat pumps for battery management and they're really small, 
they're really compact. So try to imagine mass produced small automotive heat pumps that can be used in much more controllable environments because a car is a disaster for a heat pump controller. It's, it's nothing is ever the same. It's moving, the climate is changing and so on. Uh, a heat pump in a building is complete, comparatively boring. But imagine the production power of car manufacturers and putting this product into a building environment. That could be really a game changer. Okay. Thank you very much, Thomas. We don't have another questions. Thank you for a presentation. Thank you for a, a little bit uh, future things. <laughs> <laughs> and we wish you a nice day. And do you want to tell him something? Yeah, yes. I would like to uh, really thank you, Thomas, for your very interesting presentation and the comments. I'm glad that you maybe confirm that our investment to this kind of testing facility would worth it. And uh, yeah, we also think that uh, the market of the heat pumps will grow faster. And uh, and uh, we, we are glad that we will not uh, maybe make slower development of the heat pumps uh, of the manufacturers because we can uh, provide well, I think you're the, really helping. Yeah, the, the <laughs> testing facilities as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. I think you're really you're really helping, and and this investment will be useful for the whole industry, and that means automatically it should really pay off. Also, allow me one advertising line. We will have hopefully a real conference because I would have loved to be with you today. We will have a real conference on the 29th of September in Brussels, and uh, hoping that this will become possible. I'm looking forward to meeting many of you in location and have a toast to the future of heat pumps. Thank you very much for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.